Hey, what's up guys? My name is Josh Clements. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm a video content specialist here at BoxCast, but when I got started in video production a few years ago, I saw all these crazy settings on my video camera that I didn't understand. And that's why we're here today. We're here today because camera settings can be really confusing. And when I got my first camera, I felt like this little girl on the left here, I just didn't understand what all these terms meant. And what I wanna do today is just explain a little bit about what those mean. And all the settings and the buttons will look different depending on the video camera you have, but the four concepts I'm going over today all are universal for video cameras because they all have to do with light and color temperature. So before we get started, I just want to say that I will leave these presentation slides as a downloadable PDF in the description. And if you want and you're interested in some of the live streaming gear that we use for our events, you can check it out at kit.com slash boxcast and get a feel for the kind of stuff we like to use. But let's hop right into it. So there are four main concepts and they all relate to the crazy settings that you'll see on your video camera. There's white balance, there's ISO slash gain, there's shutter speed, uh, also sometimes referred to as exposure, and then there's aperture or iris. And uh, these terms kind of all mean the same things depending on whether you're using a DSLR camera or a camcorder itself. Uh, and the first one we'll talk about is white balance. And the simplest way to explain it is the picture on the left is white balanced and the picture on the right is not white balanced. And all white balance is really determining is the color temperature in your image. So whether something is too cool or too warm. And usually your auto settings on your camera will determine this pretty well for you. But depending on the type of lighting you're in and the type of bulbs that are in the room that you're in, this can kind of get a little wonky. So you can see here we were shooting in a uh, hallway area and this probably could be like my album cover. And the goal of white balance is really just to get the image to look as close to white as possible. So let me just show you what the white balance looks like when it's too cold, if you will. So this is what it looks like when the white balance is way too cold. And then you have to change it probably to a more neutral setting in order to get the white again. And then you'll see what the white balance looks like when it's too warm. It'll appear like I'm on a really hot, in a really hot sunny day or like I'm in a volcano or something. And then we'll go back to a more neutral image. Let's move on to the next thing, which is ISO slash gain. And ISO is what the term is usually for DSLR cameras and gain is what the term is for most video camcorders. And really this is just measuring your camera's sensitivity to light and specifically measuring how sensitive your camera's image sensor is to light. So for the average camera range, there's an ISO rating of 100 to 6400. And then the lower number means it's less sensitive to light and the higher number means it's better in low light and it's more sensitive to light. Okay, but one thing to note with the ISO is that usually the higher the ISO, the more noise you're gonna see in your image because that, that image sensor is so sensitive to light that it creates like this digital noise, if you will, or a graininess to it. And so here's an example, I had some beautiful portrait headshots taken of me here. And with the lower ISO, you'll see it looks better in a lower light situation. And if you need to brighten the image, you can do that with the higher ISO, but then you'll see that graininess and that noise happening right there. So you have to find that middle ground or that sweet spot where your ISO or your gain level is, is not grainy, but it's bright enough. Let's move on to shutter speed and exposure. Shutter speed is the amount of time that the shutter is open. So the longer it's open, the more light and motion blur is taken in. And the shorter it's open, the faster the shutter moves to capture the subject. We typically measure shutter speed in a fraction of a second. So that's why you see 1 60th, 1 30th, 1 15th, et cetera. And I'll have uh, my, my video producer give me an example of this right now. So we'll go ahead and we'll lower the shutter speed. And now you can see we're taking more light in, but as we're taking more light in, there's more motion blur. And so that's not such a good thing. And then we'll, uh, actually, we'll actually slow the shutter speed down a little, or speed it up a little bit more. And now we're taking less light in, but when I move my arms, you don't see that blur as much. And here's just one more example of shutter speed. All right, the last thing we need to concern ourselves with is the iris or the aperture. 
and it's typically referred to as an iris with camcorders and the aperture will be described with like DSLR and phone cameras. But they really mean the same thing. They're describing the size of the opening that light enters into your lens. And most commonly, they're, they're known for determining the depth of field. Apertures are measured in f-stops. So there you'll see f slash 1.4, f slash 2.0, f slash 22. And the thing to note here is that the lower the number, the, the more shallow the depth of field and the more light that you'll have brought in. So I'll give you an example. So lower f-stops and aka lower f-stops means higher aperture are better for like portrait things and close-ups like this picture of my beautiful dog here. You'll see there's some good light being let in and I'm in a poorly lit room. And then you also see like there's a nice blur around the image here too. So that's at a low f-stop. At a high f-stop, you'll see that this is better for portrait and landscape type videography and photography. Uh, so when you want to have more things in focus because there's more to see, then you definitely want to shoot for something like this. And to summarize, a higher ISO will give you more light and more noise, and a lower ISO will give you less light and less noise. A higher shutter speed will give you less light and less motion blur. Lower shutter speed will give you more light and more motion blur. A higher aperture will give you less light, but more details in your image, more things in focus. And a lower aperture will give you more light and more depth of field with less things in focus. So if there's anything I explained today that didn't make sense or you want to go more in depth on, you can reach me anytime at joshclements at boxcast.com and I'll be happy to help you out because I'm always happy to help people learn more about their video production because I totally understand where you're coming from when you get a camera for the first time and you don't fully understand what everything means. So that's it for me today. Like I said, if you have any questions, reach out to me uh, and happy streaming.